All right, guys, let's take a look at uh, how we do this buck boost test on these transformers. So we've got three single phase transformers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna arbitrarily label these guys H1 and H2. If we wanted to distinguish the high side from the low side and they weren't labeled there, we could move this over to an ohmic value. And we'd see that on the high side, what are we getting, 4.5 ohms. And on the low side, We're getting 4.2. So you can see that on the, the lower side, or 3.9 there, right? So obviously we've got a lower resistance, right? Less windings, less resistance on the secondary versus our primary here at 4.5 ohms. Okay, so we've got the, the high side and the low side. And here we can see that we've got continuity between uh, these two points on the outside. No continuity between anything else there. And then these two points on the inside must be the other winding. Okay, so we're just going to arbitrarily label these guys X1, X2, X3, and X4. Okay, we have no idea whether those are the proper labels, um, but we will see once we juice it up and see what the, the voltages are. So, what we're going to do is we'll take the, the high side and we'll bring the feed for the primary here. So, we'll just take in line one and line two there and we'll go to H1 and H2. Okay, so, keep the same two phases here going to the primary. And as we label these guys H1, H2 all the way across, we'll keep this as H1 and the other one is H2. As soon as you flip the polarity on the primary, remember it will flip the polarity on the secondary. So make sure you keep these constant all the way through as you test it out. So as we turn this on, um, there is 208 volts in the shop. So we'll take a look at the voltage here. We're on AC volts. And this voltage coming in is not, oh, when do we turn it on, donkey? There we go. So, 2 8 volts. And then over here on the secondary side, we've got 124 volts on the secondary, and we've got 124 on the other secondary. Now, remember this voltage is higher than when we put an actual load onto it because the internal resistance of the windings will most likely drop it down to 120. Okay, so now we've got 2 8 here, we've got 120 here, we've seen through resistance where the windings are, and now we've checked with voltages as well. So, we'll turn this off. Uh, next thing what I want you guys to do is I want you to jumper X2, or what you think is X2, and X3 together. So we're going to series up those windings. Okay, so now those two are connected together. And now, in order to do the, let's see, let's do the, let's do the subtractive uh, voltage first. Okay, so we've got X2 and X3, and what I want you to do is connect up what you think is H1 to X1. Now this is a little bit mess. We're taking the primary and we're connecting it into the secondary there, but essentially what we're doing is we're creating an auto transformer. We're creating a, a complete winding of the primary and the secondary, and we'll see how these magnetic fields affect these magnetic fields, or how the sum of the voltages will be on the outside of the transformer. So essentially what we've done, if we take a look at our, our notes here, we've connected H1 to X1, we've connected X2 to X3, and we're now going to take a voltage reading between H2 and X4. You'll note that H1 and H2 are powered up from the source. So from H2 to X4, we should see a voltage. Now, if this is the subtractive voltage, then this voltage should take away from the secondary voltage. So let's take a look. Okay, we'll turn it on. And the voltage, again, on AC volts between H2 and X4. Now that's a disgustingly high voltage, 450 volts. So what we thought was 
each of these labels is improper because essentially what we've done, if we take a look at the additive, again, X2 and X3 are together. But what we've done is I think we've taken H, basically the, we've reversed the connections on the transformer. And so now you've got 2, 8, plus 120, plus 120, giving us, let's take a look at that voltage again, a voltage of 455 volts. So that's our additive, and we were looking for the subtractive voltage here. So again, make sure you turn it off. And what we're going to do is, instead of connecting into um, X1, what we thought was X1, I'm going to connect it into here into X4. And let's turn it on again. Okay, so now I'm going to take a voltage reading between uh, H2, and now I've got 40 volts. So now I've got the subtractive voltage. So what I thought was, <coughs> let's turn this off, what I thought was X1 is actually X4, and what I thought was X4 is actually X1. Now we said that this was connected into the first, so this is 3, and this must be 2. So now we've set it up so we've got 2 and 3 jumper together. We have H1 to X1, and we're now taking a voltage reading between H2 and X4. Okay, so that provides us with a subtractive voltage. On paper, it's supposed to be 32 volts. When we turn it on, H2 to X4, there's a subtractive voltage of 40 volts. Now we've got everything labeled properly. And if we now take the additive and now jumper our H1 over to X4, so again, taking this off from X1, put it over to X4, to the opposite side of the transformer. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a voltage reading between H2 and X1, and we should see the additive voltage. H2, X1, there's our disgustingly high voltage of 455 volts. Okay, so again, we've made an auto transformer, and the primary is adding to the secondary voltages. Okay, so that shows you your subtractive and your additive polarity, and you're going to have to do that on each of the transformers. This single phase transformer, the second single phase transformer, and the third single phase transformer. And what we're doing is we're essentially powering up the primary here, creating an auto transformer, and seeing how these voltages either add or subtract. Otherwise, we have no idea what the magnetic polarity of those connections are. And we could see that when we arbitrarily decided on each of those leads, they were wrong. As soon as we change one lead, we need to change the, the connections on each of the subsequent leads there. Okay, so we'll come back with the next video, and we'll double check, and we'll I'll do the same test on each of the single phase transformers and then we'll put them together to create a delta. And if all of them have the same magnetic polarity, then they should add up to provide our standard delta voltage.